I think some people are still still connecting, but um, let me let me say hello to those of you who uh, can hear me already. Um, thank you very much for coming to this uh, online open day. What we uh, what we are there's someone else in the waiting room. I'll let them in. Um, what we're going to, oh, hello, Misha, nice to see you. Uh, what we're going to uh, talk to you about today is um, master's programs in linguistics and translation. Uh, my name is Chris Lucas, and I'm a convener for the uh, MA Linguistics and MA Linguistics and Intensive Language. And uh, I'm going to start by telling you about those two programs. And then I'm going to hand over to my colleague Satona to talk about uh, the MA in translation. Um, and I think we'll both um, tell you about our respective programs for about 15, 20 minutes, leaving uh, a good amount of time at the end for questions. Um, and you can ask your questions um, uh, uh, verbally, if you like, but you can also uh, type them into the chat if you want. Uh, and of course, you can type uh, type things into the chat at, at, at any time. Um, I so let me let me share my screen first of all. Okay, can you? Can you see that okay? All right, great. So, I imagine uh, one or two people uh, are probably still, we're probably still waiting for them to arrive, but I think I'll, I think I'll slowly make a start because we have um, quite a lot to, to get through and we've just got this um, uh, very tight slot. We have to finish uh, just before just before 2 p.m. So, uh, okay, well, uh, welcome again, everybody. Um, in case uh, you didn't uh, catch it, uh, my name is Chris Lucas, and I'm going to be talking to you about our master's programs in linguistics. And um, these uh, happen within the School of Languages, Cultures, and Linguistics within SOAS. So first of all, um, what is the wider context at SOAS that you will be uh, studying linguistics in if you choose to do that? And we, we hope you will. Um, SOAS is the place to come if you have a, a particular interest in Africa, Asia, or the Middle East. Um, this is, is SOAS's specialism and expertise in these regions, um, as opposed to uh, the global North uh, and Europe um, is, is well known. What is perhaps uh, not quite so well known is that um, when it comes to linguistics, SOAS uh, also has uh, an extremely venerable tradition. And in fact, we have the oldest and the first linguistics department in the UK, um, uh, nearly a hundred years old now. Um, also, um, SOAS's uh, library um, is really uh, unique and is, is its, its particular uh, riches in our areas of, of interest are, are so great that it's designated a national research library and receives special funding for that reason. And of course, um, part of what makes, a, a big part of what makes that library so unique is all the material on uh, languages of uh, Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. Um, now, as I'm sure you, you're you already aware, SOAS uh, is a, an extremely diverse place in terms of uh, its uh, the backgrounds of its students and its staff. 
Um, and um, what you'll find if you if you come here is that um, staff uh, are world experts when it comes to researching and teaching uh, languages, literatures, film and cultures, both classical and contemporary of uh, Africa, Asia and the Middle East. Um, so that is that is the context of uh, SOAS and the School of Languages, Cultures and Linguistics that you'll be coming into if you choose to do your master's in linguistics here. Um, now, what about the specific offerings? So as I said, we, we also have a master's in translation, which Satona is going to tell you about uh, in a little while. Um, and uh, these are the two linguistics programs we offer. Um, in terms of the linguistics content, they, the two programs are the same. Um, the difference is MA Linguistics is a one year linguistics only masters. That's if you do it full time. You do have the option to do it part time uh, in, in two or more years. Um, and MA Linguistics and Intensive Language combines the same linguistics program with intensive study of a language. And that degree program full-time takes two years. Basically, you do half, half, half the linguistics you would do in the straight MA linguistics in the first year and the other half in the second year. Um, now, something which I will come back to in, in a minute or two is um, many of our uh, staff here at SOAS who specialize uh, in, in linguistics uh, are particularly interested in the area of language documentation and description. And in our MA linguistics, we have uh, a pathway that you, you can choose. You don't have to. Uh, if you too are interested in language documentation and description. Um, and most likely that will also be available um, via the MA Linguistics and Intensive Language, uh, but that's not yet fully confirmed. So I, I just need to uh, make that distinction clear. Okay, um, so what do, we, what, do we, what are we interested in here uh, at, in the Department of Linguistics when it comes to linguistic research? Well, uh, a wide range of topics. Um, and you see them there on the screen. And I have uh, ordered them sort of roughly speaking from least applied, most theoretical, to uh, most applied, most uh, having a connection with uh, real people in the real world. Um, so the point is uh, whether you are someone whose specialism is, uh, or, or whose interests lie more in the sort of abstract structures of language, or you're someone who's much more interested in uh, language in society, uh, we, we can cater to your interests. So uh, we have specialists in um, formal semantics and syntax, um, and that is at the most abstract structural end. Then we have several colleagues interested in language typology. So how uh, the, the, the structural features of, lang of language, languages worldwide, what is common in languages worldwide, what is less common. Historical linguistics, how, how language changes over time uh, la and language contact. And these, these um, are somewhat more applied than the abstract semantics and syntax. Um, and, and it's those things that I myself uh, uh, am most interested in. And then getting down towards the most applied uh, end of the spectrum, we uh, have colleagues who are very interested in language documentation and description, sociolinguistics, so language and society, and uh, also. Um, the very practical and pressing matter 
of how to revitalize uh, an endangered language. So um, if, if you're interested in the bottom half of, of this list, you're going to want to choose the pathway um, language documentation and description. If you're more interested in the top half of the list, then you, you will just go with the default uh, linguistics pathway. Now, if you're interested in combining uh, linguistics with uh, intensive study of a language, these are your options. You can combine linguistics with any of these languages, Arabic, Japanese, Korean, Persian. Southeast Asian languages uh, could be either Indonesian or Vietnamese, but um, I believe we can't always guarantee that you could choose either of them. It might have to be one or the other in a particular year. Swahili or Turkish. Okay, um, so how are our programs uh, structured in detail then? Well, uh, any master's program that you would choose to do at SOAS is going to consist of uh, three things. There'll be compulsory modules, there'll be optional modules, and there will be a dissertation, a master's dissertation. Um, now, optional modules come, uh, come in two varieties. The first would be um, module, linguistics modules that we, that we in the Department of Linguistics run. Um, and there's, there's two subtypes of those, and I'll, I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Um, but then another really nice special thing about SOAS is that um, almost all programs that we offer, and certainly the two linguistics programs, give you the opportunity, if you want to take it up, you don't have to, of doing um, one or two uh, optional modules from any department at SOAS. And so the choice is, is completely yours, um, what, you, what you would like to study. And, it, and it's, th this counts uh, towards the credit for your linguistics masters, okay? So um, that is, that, that's, that's quite a nice feature that we offer to any of you who, who have sort of broader interests and would like to um, learn a little bit more about something outside linguistics as part of your degree. Um, now, as I've said, we, we, we do offer this pathway in language documentation and description, um, and it's, it, it basically has the same structure as the default MA linguistics program, but it has um, some extra, uh, extra features. So first of all, we have a module introduction to language documentation and description, which you can take as an optional module, even if you do not do this pathway, but you, it's compulsory if you do do this pathway. And then in addition, there are three, uh, three special language documentation and description optional modules, which you would have to choose at least two of. So um, in more detail then, uh, this is how it's going to look. First of all, uh, please note that are our, 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 uh, ma master's linguistics programs suitable either for people who have no prior training in linguistics or people with a BA in linguistics or, or similar? People with a BA in linguistics, we would probably recommend that they go for the language documentation and description pathway, um, uh, as that is likely to contain more modules uh, that, that will be completely new to you. But if you, are, if you don't have um, a background in, in linguistics, then what you will have to do is you'll have to do this um, full year module introduction to the study of language, which is gonna give you that uh, foundation. Um, and another module which is uh, obligatory for absolutely everyone is research methods in linguistics one and that runs uh, just in the first term. Then um, those are your compulsory modules, and then you have the, the you, you must choose a number of modules from, from a list. Um, 
Uh, you don't have to do all of them. You select the ones you're most interested in. And um, some of them can be these open option modules that I mentioned from other departments. Um, so I'm not gonna go through all of these uh, in detail, uh, but what you see is that uh, there's, there's a large range of, of modules um, to choose from. And typically in total per term, if you're, if you're studying full time, including these compulsory modules, you, you would do four of these, four of these modules per term. So you see there's quite, quite a, a wide range to choose from in, in term one and term two. And these, these ones I've marked blue, these are the special language documentation and description options. Um, so teaching is in terms one and two, and term three is devoted to examinations if, if you have them in the modules that you're taking. Not all modules are assessed by an end of year exam. Some are just uh, assessed by essays. Um, and then, of course, you'll be working on your dissertation, which is submitted in early December. And, um, you know, you, you will start working on, start thinking about the dissertation ideally from the beginning, but um, it, 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 your main focus will be on your, your taught modules up until um, the, end of, the end of the first year, December, and then you'll start more intensively thinking about your dissertation. Um, at, until you are going to end up focusing on that full time uh, in, in the spring and summer. Um, okay, um, so that, that is the, uh, the bulk of, of what I wanted to convey to you. Um, as I said at the beginning, uh, for those of you who, who missed it, um, what we're going to do, I, I, I'll speak for another minute or two, uh, and then I'll hand over to Satona to uh, talk to you about our translation program. And if you will have a sort of joint Q&A uh, at the end, all right? Um, and you, if you have questions, you can either type them in the chat um, or you can uh, ask them verbally when we, when we get to the Q&A session. And, and we'll answer all questions at the end. Um, so the last thing I, I, I wanted to say is uh, that these two MA Linguistics programs uh, are jointly run, convened by me, Chris Lucas, and my colleagues, Julia Salabank and Yan Zhang. And um, if ever you have any questions, please feel very free to uh, to drop us an email. Uh, how can you find our email? Well, I highly recommend you go to um, the staff page on, on the SOAS webpage. So if I click that, um, you can see everyone we have in the department and all the emails are listed there. Um, so feel free to contact us or any, any of our staff. Um, where uh, you can also find us uh, on, on Twitter and YouTube. We have regular departmental seminars in linguistics, which uh, these days uh, are online um, and anyone can, anyone can uh, watch those and participate in those. And we have a, a, a lively research culture with uh, regular SOAS working papers in linguistics, which you can, which you can also freely access um, whenever you like. Um, and okay, I think I will at that point leave it there and hand over to Satana so that we have a good amount of time for questions at the end. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm gonna share screen so maybe Chris can stop sharing. Please. Well, I can just share then maybe, then that will. Yeah, sorry, I can't immediately more. see how to, oh, stop share, yeah. All yeah, right. yeah, don't worry, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> can you see the screen, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, um, sorry. 
Okay, so um, hi, uh, my name is Satana Suzuki, the co-convener of the MA Translation Studies. Uh, lovely to see you guys all. Um, I'm gonna explain what this program um, entails and take some questions afterwards as Chris explained. Uh, we offer a variety of exciting and very practical modules which cover different regions and languages. So as a student of, as a student of MA translation studies, you have to take 180 credits um, altogether, and this includes uh, dissertation. Uh, I think Chris just explained the structure, and it's pretty much the same. Oops, sorry. And they're compulsory and optional modules, and they're like, um, and these are the two compulsory modules. Everyone must take uh, these two. So, uh, visibility and theory. Um, you can also do it as a part-time. So if you do it as a part-time, you have to do theory first in your first year and methodology in your second, uh, and also a dissertation in your second year. Okay, and then, and, um, as, uh, it's, as it's the same as linguistics, it's a list A modules and list B modules, and these are list A modules, and you have to take uh, 60 credit from here. As you can see, a lot of practical translation, English into other languages and vice versa, and translating cultures, technology, and also subtitling and things like that. Um, other languages include um, Arabic, Chinese, Japanese, Persian, Turkish, uh, Swahili, and Korean. So you can take either um, one or two for those modules. And then list B, consists of more sort of diverse uh, modules and you have to take, uh, sorry, this is, what did I show you? Yeah, sorry, sorry, I'm just being confused. Oh, sorry, list B modules, yes, that's right, sorry. More diverse uh, stuff and um, sort of consists of uh, things like, uh, so LDD as well here and linguistics, you can take those and also a lot of literature and film studies as well. And you have to take 30 from here, as I said. And then you have to write a dissertation, uh, 10,000 word. And uh, I think the uh, deadline is early September, since in year six. Um, and you have two choices for MA translation studies. One is the uh, translation project, and the other one is research project. So for the translation project, you have to choose the language and the source text of, you, of the language of your choice. Uh, so meaning translating from what language to what language. Uh, so for example, Chinese to English or English to Arabic. So you have to make a decision. So for your source text, um, you can choose whatever genre you'd like, you know, for example, uh, manga, literature, sub, uh, subtitles and blocks and things, as long as it hasn't been translated before. Um, it's a bit hard, I guess, nowadays, because everything, anyone can publish anything on website, but uh, at the same time, it's easy to find it on, uh, on the web, so it's both difficult and easy, I guess. But yes, but you, you, you have to choose something that hasn't been translated before. And then this project sort of um, consists of 60% translation um, and 40% commentary. Uh, so commentary meaning describing your translation process and also justifying and explaining why and how you translated the source text um, as you did. Um, and also you, you are expected to apply theories and methodologies uh, which you have learned from your compulsory modules. But essentially it's about translation, if that makes sense. Um, so if you wish to become a translator, uh, you recommend it to, to, to do the translation project. Um, the research project, uh, on the other hand, is more, more theory based. Um, so if you like to pursue an academic career, uh, you know, you want to be, uh, do a PhD, um, 
you know, you want to become an academic, you should choose this one because uh, you need to be familiar with the writings of theoretical papers and things. So after choosing what you want to do, you know, which language and which region or which type will be assigned with a supervisor around um, late January, maybe something like that. And then you start super supervision from February onwards. And um, as Chris uh, explained, you'll be um, writing it in term three. I mean, you can, of course, start writing it with your other modules, doing your other modules, but yeah, you have to kind of time manage and do things like that. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going quite fast. It's not going to be as long as Chris's, um, but as Chris explained more for us, that's great. And uh, as students of MA translation studies, uh, you have a great opportunity to work as translators, uh, both paid and unpaid, including uh, voluntary and charity works. Um, so languages offered for this enterprise include also Arabic, Chinese, Kikuyu, Korean, Japanese, Persian, Swahili, and Turkish. Um, and organizations we have worked for, we, uh, with or for include BBC World, um, NHS, uh, Guardian, um, if it's a Japanese one, NHK Enterprises, and other big organizations. And um, you have to be a member of uh, Center of Translation Studies to be involved with this enterprise. So just, yeah, Center for Translation Studies. So you can see here that's Nana, the other convener of MA Translation Studies. He's, she's also the head of department for linguistics and other um, languages and cultures department. So she, she runs this uh, center. Um, uh, the center also organizes uh, seminars, conferences, uh, summer schools, and workshops. And we, we are very active and also on social media as well. So like Facebook, so you can check it out. Uh, it's all on the source website as well. And also at the moment, uh, Center for Translation Studies, we are uh, conducting a UK ally funded project. So it's just one of the examples, uh, which is about how COVID-19 has affected uh, London's diverse ethnic and minority communities and how these communities actually translate, um, interpret and react to the pandemic. And I'm involved uh, in this project as a, a researcher for Japanese um, communities and sort of conducting loads of interviews to um, uh, London residents, and it's been really, really fruitful and meaningful. So uh, I can I can't emphasize enough that language and translation skills that you learn in this pro program can actually help and contribute to society um, because you sort of learn and improve your abilities and skills to mediate both um, culturally and linguistically. And so that you can sort of communicate with people on a sort of sort of more authentic and deeper level. So I'm sorry, I just went through it really quickly. <laughs> and that's um, pretty much it for our program. Just gonna stop sharing here. So yeah, sorry, it was really quick, wasn't it? <laughs> but because Chris, you you explained quite thoroughly at the yeah. beginning. Uh, I think it's good. It. Uh, so so we've got plenty of time uh, for yeah, questions. questions if anybody has any they would like to ask uh, including if if you want uh, either of us to s just go into more detail about anything that, that that we spoke about briefly then that's that's of course fine and like I say if you want if you prefer to write it down uh, that's fine uh, if you prefer to um, speak it <laughs> that's also okay no questions and there's there's no rush as well i mean uh we don't we don't have to uh 
we don't have to hurry you up if you mm -hmm. want to take time to think about it you know we're we're here and we're available so um have a think and um and and we can we can just wait till uh till you have anything that occurs to you that you would like to know or you can probably ask students uh prospective students what they're interested in as well maybe you can put it in the chat what you're interested in what what program which program maybe you can put it in the chat I have like um core system I could create a poll or something, but maybe I don't have the authority. Oh, Nish is asking a question. Am I in linguistics and Arabic? I've already spoken to Dr. Lucas, so I don't really have any questions at this point. Maybe Nisha, you can explain what sort of questions you had so that other people might have similar questions, if you don't mind, if you don't mind. Yeah, no. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nisha. Uh, I did um, contact Dr. Lucas uh, several weeks ago and we spoke and I, um, I just really had questions about sort of the things that you covered today um, about the structure of the course and you know how um how good of an idea people had prior to coming in about what um what topics they might want to uh address in their dissertations um and um you know i, I told dr lucas a little bit more like specifically about my interests probably more focused on the theoretical side um, rather than the applied side. Um, and, uh, you know, I just wanted to know things like, will classes be in person and, uh, um, you know, things like that really. So it was, uh, it was very helpful. Thank you, Nisha. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, that, 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 I think there's a couple of things that is helpful probably to say there in response. Uh, thank you so much, Nisha, uh, for repeating those <laughs> those questions. But I think that is really helpful for everyone. So um, yeah, so on the will, will classes be in person question, I mean, uh, you know, I think anyone who's tried to predict uh, what COVID is going to do <laughs> next <laughs> has usually failed. Um, but uh i can say that um you know covid is very much here in the uk now um but hasn't and, left yet <laughs> yeah it certainly hasn't left yet so not at all uh but so the so the point is um we can't know that um i think it's reasonable that to think that next year when you would be studying here uh covid couldn't possibly be worse than it is now and um what it, what it is now is the way it affects us now is that basically we have lectures um online uh but uh starting starting in january in fact um everyone is all students at soas are required to be present in london and um uh everyone will have some face-to-face -face te teaching through the tutorials. So um, we have this distinction between lectures and tutorials. So everyone taking a class will together attend a lecture. And then if, if, if that's a large number of students, then um, they will split up into smaller groups, um, which we call tutorials, uh, where you do more, more sort of hands-on learning. Um, so those, I think you can be absolutely certain as certain as you can be of anything in this in these days, that you will have um, small group teaching in person at least. And if we go back to how things were before COVID, lectures of course would be um, uh, in person as well. Um, that's that, that's what I could say about that. Um, 
Now, the, the other point about the dissertation and like, um, uh, do, you, do you need to know before you start exactly what you want to write your dissertation on? Uh, the answer to that question is, is no. So um, really uh, people vary quite a lot. You, you often get students who um, they have a specific idea before they start of, of what they want to work on. And um, that's, that's great, that's, that's absolutely fine, but that, that's no better uh, actually from our point of view. It's no worse, but it's no better than not really knowing what you want to research for your dissertation. Um, we're, we're, we're happy either way. I mean, if you have a, if you have a fixed uh, or a sort of detailed idea before you start, um, then I would say it's very important to discuss that with um, you know, one of your program conveners uh, as early as possible, because um, it may well be that, I'm sure it'll be a good idea, but whether it'll be an idea that you can get good supervision for is, is not certain, right? Um, so um, that, that's the one caveat I would, I would, uh, I would make there. But um, yeah, if you, if you just know that you're interested in linguistics or translation, and um, you just want, and you you just want to learn about it, uh, and you've got no idea what you would be writing your dissertation on. That that's that's absolutely fine. Um, like I said, um, it's only so basically the the, the current cohort. Um, we're going to be meeting. You know, so far they've really been focusing on their. Um, on their coursework, on their, on their taught modules. And we're going to be meeting them in early December to start the process of them thinking about um, uh, what, what to do their dissertation on in, in the most general terms and uh, which member of staff would be best to supervise them. And once you've chosen a supervisor, like, like Satana said, um, you know, you would start meeting with them early in the new year and then together you would flesh out your, your ideas. Um, they would, you know, some people need, need more direction in coming up with an initial, um, an initial topic, um, and that's fine. Other people, you know, th through, through doing their modules in the first term, they have a clear idea of, of the area that they would like to do their dissertation in, uh, but, you know, then your supervisor would, would help you um, develop, for example, specific research questions to, to address in your dissertation and give you advice about how to go about doing the research uh, that would lead to your dissertation. Um, so yes, um, really, really, we, we, like I said, we cater to both, both types of student, the, the, the ones that come with detailed ideas and and the ones that don't it, both are absolutely fine and students sometimes change their mind too that's of course, of course. <laughs> you know the more you do certain modules you might be interested in something else and that's totally fine and uh, yep. uh, for ma translation studies we run um, training sessions a uh, couple of training training sessions i think we've done one already so um Okay, um, thank you, Nisha, uh, for your uh, questions, repeating your thank questions. You. <laughs> and the Yuna says, uh, so you're interested in MA translation program, wondering for the practical translation modules with Korean be available each year, but on which pair are you choosing methods? So for Korean is a little bit, a Korean and Japanese from, Japanese Korean to English. Um, it was sorry. I'm just going to share screen again. It's probably easier to see it visually. Here, so practical translation English to other languages, and Korean to English and Japanese to English. A translation are listed separately because uh, these two um, belong to or taught by. Uh, people in East Asian languages and um, cultures department. Uh, but what we do is basically 
exactly the same as other languages. Uh, but at the moment, um, from English to Korean, uh, we, we don't offer, we only offer Korean to English, uh, simply because of resources at the moment. Uh, we don't know whether it's going to change next year, but this year is that is the case. So um, I'm just going to stop sharing again. So we're going to have to see. We have to kind of check if that makes sense. You know, is that does that answer your question? We can maybe do thumbs up or <laughs> raise hand or something. Is that okay? put it in the chat okay i i, I see another quick uh, see another question here let me Who's have a look question? yeah so currently my final year of ba in japanese i'm interested in ma linguistics and sense of language my question is japanese, okay. am i required to have attained a certain level of japanese to accept this course my second question is if i'm graduating the course of my choice will my degree be ma Okay. So Japanese, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, please it's you. <laughs> yeah, but I think I think actually these all these questions are on sort of on the Japanese side. I mean, I think okay. I could, I think yeah. I can give an initial answer, but yeah, you, okay. You correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, yeah, so, sure, so, sure. so uh I are you you're involved are you involved with the teaching i'm that? not involved in the teaching but okay. I, I do know that for intensive i think you have to be pretty much beginners you can't you have, be advanced ah that's what i know <laughs> okay yeah okay but for ma translation studies your japanese has to be somewhere between n2 if if you have to do so, sorry japanese to english then your Japanese has you have to have JLPT N2. And if you your dissertation will be Japanese to English, then N3, if that makes sense. But for MA linguistics and intensive, I think you have to be beginner or kind of near beginner, because I don't think uh, you offer advanced language modules. I'm just looking uh ah, yes. Yeah, I see. I the web. I'm looking at the website for for intensive Japanese, right. and um, it seems that in theory there was a there has been a post beginner, as in non non beginner. Uh, non track, beginner, but not. But, but it, it hasn't been offered. It wasn't offered this year. I, yeah. So I think that that that's a question to take up in more detail with um, the people, the the convener of the um, intensive Japanese MA program. Yeah. Do you know who that is? It looks I, like Barbara Pizziconi. Yes, Barbara, bp3 at soas.ac.uk. Yeah. yeah, so, but, but so um, that's Japanese, right? I mean, I know your question is about Japanese, but for anyone else, who may be interested in other languages? Um, that's not a ca the case across the board. So I know I know that for Arabic, um, you don't have to be a beginner. Mm. You you can um, you can have previously studied Arabic. Yeah. So um, sorry, maybe I said it wrongly. No, 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 no. I mean, no, no, no. It's not I, that I, you have to be a beginner, but it's like somewhere between beginner and intermediate. I think. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, but but with 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 Arabic, uh, let me make absolutely certain. But I believe that you can. Um, I believe you can be sort of uh, you can have done a BA in Arabic and just be working at a fairly advanced level. Let me double check this. If you give me one second. So I think Segnik. I don't know whether I'm pronouncing your name correctly, but you'll do final year BA. In Japanese, um, your Japanese might be advanced. I'm not sure, but you can you can check it with. I'm gonna put it in here. Barbara Pizzicone, she's the convener of intensive. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, when it, I don't know if anyone here is. I mean, I know Nisha is interested in Arabic, but I think you haven't studied it previously. I 
I, I forget, but in any case for Arabic, uh, at least you can be beginner, intermediate or advanced. It's, uh, you, you have, the, have the choice. Okay, so, so that's an issue you have not, so that's fine. Uh, and I think, you know, depending on what language you're interested in, um, as I said, you can, um, you can do Arabic, Japanese, Korean, Persian, Southeast Asian languages, uh, Swahili and Turkish. Um, you'll, you'll have to check, there'll be a, a page on the SOAS website dedicated to the MA intensive language uh, uh, for each of those languages. And, and that'll show you um, uh, whether you have to be a beginner or, or, or whether you can also be more advanced. Um, that would be. Oh, and then, and then you had a second question, didn't you? So uh, if you graduate in the course of your choice, will your degree be, your degree, if, if, if you do the MA, MA Linguistics and Intensive Japanese, you, you will graduate with a degree in Linguistics and Japanese. Um, I think, I think your degree certificate will say MA linguistics and intensive language in brackets Japanese. But also, of course, you'll have your, so, so it will, you know, you will have a joint degree. Any sort of employer can see that you've studied both things from the name of your degree. Uh, but also you'll, you'll get a transcript of all the modules that you've done, which will show that you've done both linguistics and Japanese. So I just put it in the chat. So you're going to get MA linguistics and intensive language I get Arabic. Yes, that's what we get. That's your MA for Japanese, or Chinese, or Turkish. Pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> okay, any other questions, guys? At all? I think one thing I want to mention is for intensive language, you do get the summer abroad opportunities that you can study to one of our partner university in the, the that native speaking country and then language. So you can practice more about the language. Um, I may have one question because I had uh, this question before that student asked me in the recruitment fair about linguistic um, MA course. So if they study this course, do they have to choose a specific language to focus on or it just like general linguistic system? And yeah, no, no. The, the answer to that is, is no. Um, we really... Um, when when you study linguistics we encourage you or we make you in fact uh, consider data from a from a wide range of languages um, of course if you have a particular interest in one specific language then we're very happy if you um if you want to you know for your assignments you'll often have quite for your dissertation of course but also for your assignments for different modules you'll often have quite a lot of freedom in how you want to um, approach your answer to a particular question and if you have a language that you have a particular interest in you, you'll have a lot of opportunity to focus your uh, answers to different assignments on on the language of your choice um, but if you're not like that i mean so i i am um, I can't remember if I if I said my 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 title is senior lecturer in Arabic and linguistics. So I, I specialize in Arabic, um, and I have a particular interest in Arabic. But um, I'm also interested in 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 principle in all languages. Um, so you, it's not that you're supposed to have a language specialism. Some people, some linguists do, some don't. Either way is fine. Thank 
Uh, Satana, I think you're still muted. I, I think you're answering the question, right? Sorry. Yes, I was just reading out Yuna's question. CTS to work as a translator if they wish to. I think, yeah, uh, I think you do use, you have to participate in CTS to work as a translator if they wish to. I think, yes, um, the program, conv uh, sorry, the module, conv you can ask the module convener. Um, this year, I think it's Burchin. Uh, Chris, do you know Butchin's email address? Just a second. It's a theory or methodology, I think. It's Butchin is teaching it. Just a second. So if you have to ask the, uh, it's better to ask the convener himself. Just a second, I'm just looking. Um, Oh, thank you, Chris. <laughs> thank you. You beat me to it. Yeah. So yes, you know, if you can ask uh, Burujin, then yeah, he'll be able to answer. Thank you. Any other questions? If there's any other questions, maybe we can wrap it up, Chris. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there, there's still time if anyone wants to ask more questions, but if not, then we'll probably um, say thank you and goodbye. And of course, uh, if you think of a question later, then um, uh, you you can you can write to us. I'm just typing my email in the chat right now. Um, and mine. Like, yeah, there you go. So you've got both our emails. So please do feel free to ask us anything at all by email. Um, you know, including if you have any questions about the application process and so on. Um, and yes, uh, thank you very much for, <clears throat> for joining this session today and for your interest in SOAS. And uh, hopefully we'll see some or all of you uh, next next year yes Thank all right you guys i will do have another session for student and alumni panel just at two so just seven minutes later if you're interested to come along to that uh, panel so you can hear from our students and previous alumni and their experience as well as yeah. right. thank, thank you very much everyone okay hopefully see you everyone. next year bye Goodbye. bye